Okay, uh, so hi, my name is Ovi. I am a software developer based in uh, Bucharest. I currently work for the company 3E. I've been doing Clojure for three years now. Uh, currently, I'm mainly doing UI work, um, but uh, Clojure is still my main free time activity. Um, I mean, I've been working at 3 for the last uh, two years. Uh, in my free time, I like to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and still code most of my free time. So, yeah. So, today uh, we're going to talk about bringing real time AI to phone calls using core async. And this is basically how you can interact with LLMs like ChatGPT uh, over the phone. It's not surprising that Clojure lends itself very well to this type of project as the entire operation here is basically a pipeline yeah, from from the user speech going in and to the AI uh, going in and we'll look more into what that uh, means use cases so some use cases for this type of project are automated customer support calls um, many times if you have a question you need answered or a simple operation to be done um, this type of uh, issue can be solved with ai um, because you can give it access to a knowledge center or you can define some functions it can use things like function calling that we'll we'll discuss later um, also called sales call so fun fun thing i i uh, looked into this so Companies do like call, uh, cold calling campaigns. I know they are not uh, pleasant, but uh, those happen. So this would be a great scenario to apply something like this. And the bonus is that if you have a Excel with 1,000 people you need to call, you can start all those calls in parallel and be done with it in half hour. So that's a great bonus there. And also chat GPT while driving, which is which is how i started this uh, whole project because i uh, wanted to ask something but i couldn't so now i just ask siri to call the number for the for the volume agent and yeah i just talked to it okay um so we will need some providers in order to do this uh, the first provider is your telephony provider for this project, I used Twilio, but you can also use Vonage, which is another API-based telephony provider. Some other alternatives are Asterisk and FreeSwitch, which are uh, full-fledged telephony software that you need to set up and use. The advantage is that it's open source, but it's a very big learning curve to, to learn this type of SIP uh, software and, and telephony basically call center uh, software um, yeah we are going to look at using twilio for this transcription provider so currently the best uh, transcription especially for english and for real time transcription is deepgram uh, there are some others like um, gladia but not a lot of options here and basically what for other languages aside for english you can use whisper over websocket so what this means is whisper is by the way the open ai open source uh, transcription model um what you need to do is you need to host it put a websocket api in front of it and the audio you need to give it you need to chunk it for like five seconds and maybe you can do some optimizations to watch for silences um <clears throat> Whisper itself is not built for real-time transcription. It's built only for offline. So the use cases you're going to see is you give it a file and it, it will give you back the transcription for that file. So you're going to have to uh, tweak it a bit. And the LLM provider, which is your classic chat-based LLM, uh, some options I listed here, OpenAI, Grok, Mistral, Llama is, is another one for this project. I've used LLM, uh, sorry, I used OpenAI simply because well, uh, the closure library for interfacing with OpenAI is well written. 
Uh, and voice generation, finally, once you have the text response to the user, you will have to transform that into voice. Some providers here are 11 Labs, OpenAI, PlayHT. There are some more like Element, that's L-M-N-T, or Rhyme AI. Uh, you have a lot of choices when it comes to voice generation. One thing, one a caveat into voice generation is that many of these providers for voice generation, so these models were made for narration or to voice ads. And you can tell when you use one of those models to in, in a conversational agent because it truly feels unnatural the way they speak. So you need to experiment a bit and um, find a conversational agent. And for that, yeah, Eleven Labs and OpenAI have some good models there. All right, so let's get into some closure. So core async, uh, I want to do a small refresher uh, or a small introduction into core async. It, it's basically, it's a library on top of uh, closure core. It's not part of closure core. Uh, it provides async support for closure. It's an implementation of CSP, which is communicating sequential processes. Another example of such an implementation you're gonna find in Go. You're going to see a lot of similarities, but um, if we look um, at the example here, so core async provides channels. You can think of channels as asynchronous queues um, that are available across processes, and you can put items on them and you can take from them. By default, um, if you create a channel with the chan function, you're, you're going to get this unbuffer, so you can put one element and if you try to put another one, it will block until that element is taken. You can increase the buffer, say, for example, 10 there. And uh, now you can put 10 elements, and that's the limit before the, the channel starts to block on new items put. And you can modify the buffer behavior, so dropping buffer. If you use a dropping buffer, this will mean that if the buffer is full, new items that you will put on the, on the <coughs> channel uh, will be dropped. Whereas a sliding buffer, if you put new items when the buffer is full, all the items will be dropped. Um, and this was uh, a intentional design by the Clojure team. So they said, you need to think about how you design your software so that you can, so that you don't uh, use infinite uh, channels. Meaning, you always need to think what you how your software software should behave in case of a blockage so that your program doesn't go out of memory uh, in these asynchronous situations say for example there is a crash in your reader from a channel uh, there is a behavior for how the application should behave in that scenario and mostly as you'll see further it behaves as a conveyor belt so input you put uh, you put things on a channel, those channels uh, are read by some workers that will do some work, will put the results on the next channel and so on until you have an output. And this is the API. Um, so you have this greater than exclamation mark. These are only available inside the Go block. We're gonna look at the Go block in a second. And uh, with the two exclamation marks, this, you can, this is the expression for a put. Uh, on a thread and the same for, for take, so put and take. All right, uh, go blocks. So code that is put, that is uh, inside a go block is actually transformed into a state machine. This code will run in a thread pool managed by core async. Those threads are called IOC threads, inversion of control threads. Um, so, how this works, the state machine is your code, um, again, is going to be uh, converted into a state machine. And once it reached, uh, reaches a asynchronous state, the, 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 the go block will be parked and other work will be, will be added to be executed on the, on the thread from the thread pool. And once that finishes, it will come back and, and finish uh, the work there. And it returns returns a channel, uh, as we saw here, but and the channel contains the result of the last expression from, uh, from the Go block. Uh, and I put here also the Go loop, just because you're going to see it 
a lot in the next examples. It's basically just a macro for go loop and loop is the normal closure loop record that you see. And you can use this to listen on a channel. So you start a go loop and it basically whenever you get a, a value, uh, you do something with it and then you recur. And this is how you listen on a channel. All right. Um, here is basically the pipeline for um, this in the entire uh, program. So Twilio will send you the user audio. It's going to be URL encoded. You can think of it as a string, but yeah, it's a representation of audio. You're going to feed that to ASR. ASR means automatic speech recognition. So you're going to feed that to your ASR. Your ASR is going to give you back uh, the text, meaning sentences of what that user said. And then you're going to send that to your LLM, which probably has a prompt, uh, something like you are a helpful customer support agent. This will output uh, tokens. So this is very important. If you want to make this as fast as possible, you cannot out, you cannot wait for the entire response of uh, of the LLM because that will take a long time. So you take the the tokens that the channel will output, and you assemble sentences. And once you have a sentence, you take that to the text to speech. You generate audio for one sentence, and you play that back to the user. And you. After that, you simply uh, yeah, take the process again and, and stop that. We're going to also talk about interrupting the pipeline because in a normal conversation, let's say I am having a conversation with an interlocutor. Once I, uh, I'm, I want to say two things, but my interlocutor says something unrelated, the other two things I wanted to say are now gone and I need to be present in the conversation. So you can think about this example when you already have generated two sentences here and there is new input. What you need to do here is basically drop that. And we're going to look at that. So uh, Twilio. Basically, for Twilio, you're going to buy a phone number. It's very easy to buy a US phone number, but I had to go to through some work to buy, for example, I wanted an international number. And for that number, you're going to provide a webhook. Uh, so this means where do we, where does Twilio send a notification? Hey, there is an incoming call. And how do you want us to handle that? Um, and yeah, here uh, I use ngrok to point that endpoint to my local machine. All right. And Twilio the API to interact with Twilio is uh, XML. They call it Twimel, but it's XML with some custom verbs they have. And this is another example where of why closure is a very good option for this uh, scenario because, well, closure is very good with XML. You basically send these types of uh, responses. Now, what you see here, here, this type of verbs, and it's important, we are interested in the connect and stream verbs. They tell Twilio to make a bidirectional audio connection uh, request to the specific audio URL. So Twilio, when we give it this command, will create a WebSocket connection um, to, to this particular URL, uh, and it will stream you the audio track. So whatever the user says on the phone, it will get streamed. Uh, to this endpoint. Now, I'm going to talk a bit about how we keep the call session. So what channels do we need? And uh, this is this describes a in progress call. Um, the ASR channel means the transcription channel. And here is where when the transcription has new text, it will be put on this channel and the LLM will and the LLM worker will listen on that channel. Here, you, we're going to put the tokens that the LLM uh, generated. Here, we're going to assemble them. We're going to look at that. Um, the, the WebSocket is the um, object describing the WebSocket connection with Twilio, because we're going to have to send back stuff uh, on that. And the conversation is basically the context uh, kept on the conversation. So the list of you, you can think uh, when you talk to ChatGPT, the chat history. 
All right. So Twilio will send you a bunch of events. Um, you see the mark event there, but I think for, for this part, we are only interested in the media start and stop. So start and stop are when the new phone call is started, stop uh, when the phone call stops. And media is the event you're going to get whenever there is a new audio. Um, so basically what you're going to do is whenever there is new audio chunks, you're going to send that to your uh, transcription provider. And once that will have text, it will be put on a channel for continuous work. Here is how the um, conversation looks. Uh, you see the channels. E essentially, here you describe your conveyor belt. So the first stage on the conveyor belt is the transcription provider, the ASR. And the ASR channel is going to be the, the input for the LLM stage. Uh, this, the LLM will read from the ASR and put its results on the LLM channel. The LLM channel will be the input for the sentences assembler. And it's going to put its output on the sentences. The text to speech uh, stage will get that as an input and put the generated speech on the text to speech channel. And finally, you get to play back to the user. Um, all right. So the LLM stage. Um, it's ha how we described it earlier. You wait and listen for, for input. One thing which people might not be familiar with is the pipe uh, function. This is a function from the core async library. It basically means uh, transfer everything that is in, on this channel to the out channel. And this is this is the OpenAI library, uh, by the way. Uh, a very good library created by Werner Koch. I think that's I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, once you give it a stream through property, it will output a channel and it will put all those tokens on the on a channel. So basically, you here you say, yeah, transfer all of that from the input channel to the output channel. And this false here means if this channel closes should i also close the output channel and we don't want to do that because we still want that open for subsequent um, messages the sentences stage this is just a assembler of uh, tokens so yeah it's a it's a loop record inside the go block basically it the it will take the string, which is, let me get to that. It's basically this thing, uh, hello, how are there? And it, it's going to be assembled into a sentence. That's basically what happens at that point. And um, once it finds a sentence, it's put on the output channel and uh, you, you recur with an empty string. Otherwise, until you find the punctuation mark, which delimits a sentence, you keep on waiting for tokens until you assemble a full sentence. All right, uh, text to speech. So I'm using OpenAI also. And uh, here is a, an interesting thing. So telephony and audio in telephony in general, you need to provide an encoding called MULA. Uh, that's M-U-L-A-W uh, with a frequency of 8,000. And not all providers give you that frequency. So you're going to have to either take, here I'm taking MP3 and I need to convert it. So um, how I do that is, yeah, you have an audio input stream, um, <clears throat> and um, you, this function uh, audio input stream to Twilio will will take that MP3 MP3 and convert it to the to the correct uh, uh, format. So how you do that? It's not as straightforward to to convert. Uh, audio first you need to to so pcm uh, this means pulse code modulation this is actually uh what is used for the wav uh, 
audio format. And then you need to convert it to mono. So from a stereo audio, you need to convert it to a mono because that's only that's the only thing supported on phones. And uh, yeah, you then need to convert it to 8K. And finally, you get to convert it to Mulo. And it uses U. I think people would be familiar with how Mulog has the same thing, which is it's sometimes hard to write the Mu uh, letter. And maybe this was just me. Maybe I'm not that familiar with the Java ecosystem, but it was quite hard to find a Java library or examples of audio conversion that work because normally you would use um, Java X sound sampled, but that only supports uh, WAV conversion and, and FLAC. And you need basically to provide plugins on top of it so that you can convert from other things. And mostly people use FFmpeg, which is written in C. I think everybody's familiar with it. And there aren't a lot of wrappers of FFmpeg to the normal Java uh, API for audio. The only one that worked and is FF sample DSP. Shout out to, to Henrik Schreiber for, for helping me. I was blocked quite a while on, on this audio conversion issue. Um, for me, this was the uh, best library for the job. Uh, so yeah. And finally, we get to the worker that will play back to the user. So you listen for inputs on the audio channel, meaning uh, audio is put on this channel. And once you get it, uh, what you see here, this NQ playback uh, and, and marking playback, this is Twilio related stuff. But what we care about here is send message. So that audio uh, at the end, you need to encode it in base 64 and that's how you transport it over the over the wire so you just send that message uh, to to twilio uh, over the websocket hey please play this back to the user and um, i would say mostly that's how the pipeline works in uh, more or less terms and also you have function calling. So this is uh, something I added in recently, but in your pipeline, you can uh, instruct your LLM, hey, you have these functions available for you. And here I give the example of ending the call and getting current weather, which is a mock function. Uh, and how this works for AI models is you, you instruct your AI, AI in the initial prompt, you have these functions available for you and call and get current weather. In your conversation with the user, check if any of these functions need to be called uh, and at what point. And still you as the program writer need to invoke those functions. Basically, you need to check the responses of the AI and AI will, will the LLM will tell you, hey, please invoke this function with these arguments and give me back the result. Um, and for example, if the user asks, hey, what's the weather today? The LLM will say, hey, please invoke this function to the program itself. You invoke that function and you give it back the result and the AI will tell the user the weather is this and so. And that's how currently uh, this flow works. And Core Async uh, is very helpful here because you can have uh, publishers. So. You, once you have a channel, you can split that channel into two separate pipelines. So for example, when the, you can have, uh, for example, what the LLM generates, you can take on a, you, you can split it into pipelines, one for function calling and one for actual content that needs voice generated for it. All right. Um, and one of the biggest challenges in doing a project like this is latency. So the current downsides of using many external dependencies on a project like this is that sometimes they are unreliable and there is not much that you can do about it, especially. So I'll give the example of open AI. If, for example, when nighttime approaches, so that's for European nighttime, I mean, because that's when um uh, american usage sta starts to starts to peak uh 
you see a a decrease in an increase in latency and also in the weekends um a solution for this is to host your own models uh, on azure and or another provider and uh, yeah use your own llms for that um another thing is to yeah host your models as close to your running code as possible so you also do away with network latency because at the end of the day currently there are still apis being called and all right so the next thing is debugging slowness it's not as straightforward as REPL based development when you do async work like this you need to have traces and uh, i'm very grateful to have discovered uh, mu log and mu trace the tool you see here on the top is um, it's called zipkin and if you go into the mu log repository you're going to find descriptions of uh, how you can start the, the the docker publishers for this and it's 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 pretty easy it took me i think it took me 40 minutes to have everything set up and debug the biggest uh, issues and let's look at this example so for example this is the the time it takes for text generation and this was uh, an example from it doesn't take this long anymore but still this was a situation and at the time when i began looking into this i thought that the biggest time will actually be the encoding but as you can see this takes like nanoseconds so the text to speech itself is split into the open ai request so how long it takes to add for open ai to actually respond to your query uh, and then you this is the conversion time so this is how much it takes to convert from mp3 from mp3 to to mu law but the actual biggest time waster is actually reading the entire input stream because uh, this is still a java input stream uh, so you read the byte array from that and it takes uh, a, a long time so that you can finally convert that entire thing into into a stream and i i couldn't have found that and here's the api of how to use the the tracing system in uh, uh, in your code and this is the best way I, I found to debug slowness in an async pipeline. Um, and also, if you use the other publisher of Elasticsearch and you can query a bit by your call ID, for example, and you can read this from uh, from bottom to top. So this means the, the call has started, uh, th then the WebSocket connection from Twilio has started, um and then the this is the provider i was using for transcription at the time uh and here it actually returned a subscription so from the time it connected it took five seconds of user speech for example let's say until the transcriptor said oh hey here's some text the user said and from that time so it it took actually from the time we got text back it took two milliseconds until we asked uh until we issued our request hey what does this uh say and then you have somewhere around uh almost a second for the text-to-speech request to uh to fire and and so on this is a an example of ways that you can understand your pipelines and it's basically through logging and tracing and then a good way of looking at those logs all right interrupting the pipeline so as uh, i said in the beginning the way you, for example when two humans speak if i am speaking and the other person starts speaking the thing is i should stop speaking and whatever else i was uh, want, trying to say basically that's gone if it's not relevant to the conversation anymore so this would mean for this scenario uh that so you see here the text the text to speech has generated some audio and the user already is hearing hello there so maybe it's at the hello stage and the text to speech stage is preparing to send also say this thing yes i can hear you but if the user says something at this point you need to uh, cancel all of this so you, there is a signal you can send to twilio so you can send the interrupt 
signal which will uh, stop play, uh, the playback for what was currently said. However, it Twilio doesn't send you back, oh, and I stopped at this point. So you don't know, okay, the user heard up until hello, and then he didn't hear, hear anything. Um, so I tried uh, many approaches to this. First was to compute how much it would take for the user to hear that so I can estimate, okay, he should hear that by 820 or something like that, but that would have needed. Uh, it's, it's still unreliable in my experiments with that due to network delay uh, and, and, and so on. So, and another thing is you can send real time audio only so it's like you can send 20 millisecond chunks of audio to twilio so you can simulate real time uh, uh, player for example and you can way easily interrupt that all right further optimizations that need to happen so the first is uh, caching text-to-speech responses in uh, redis or whatever uh, key value store basically because those lend themselves very well to to caching because if you look at an audio file it's still a yeah it's a either a byte array or a string you can look at it like that it would still depend on uh, the provider configuration but if you already sent hey please uh, transform this text into voice and it's basically text to text there is no reason uh, not to not to cache that uh, Another optimization is hosting the models near your code. So even DeepGram and the voice generation providers, a great thing to do is actually go to them and say, hey, I want your on-premise options. You host those uh, on your own infrastructure. And a great thing to do is uh, once a call is started to, to um, start a gpu and use a dedicated gpu for for that call i would say that would bring somewhere around 500 milliseconds uh, the golden standard for conversational uh, how should i say for, for for a good conversation is that between speakers there should be like a 700 500 to 700 milliseconds delay Currently, the project has around 1.5 millisecond, uh, 1.5 second delay from user speech until AI response. Um, reflecting on the challenges, so I have been building this project on and off for uh, the last six months. Uh, one of the challenges was keeping up the pace with AI development in, in Node Python, and sometimes it felt that like I was catching up because they were only providing clients for yeah these languages and you kind of have to go into the code and implement your own thing. But once you have it, uh, it's stable, it's there. And once you create your abstractions, it's it's very easy to, to, to go from there. But I could see in the future that a lot of the logic or this thing could be split into some, some components and closure just being the glue uh between those components especially with core i think uh because you have a lot of functionality and uh, for example race conditions so with core i think you can do things like start these two operations with a timeout of two seconds and whichever one completes by that time put that one or put none of them and it's that's two lines of code to do with uh, core i think whereas it would take you quite uh, longer to implement such logic in other languages all right, uh, demo time. So I'm gonna switch to my REPL. I see that uh, you see that. So here is some of the code for that, but, and I think this is in. So I have my ngrok set up here. Um, let me restart the REPL. I hope this works. This is a live demo, so please uh, be kind. It might have uh, issues. So I'm going to call, wait, this number, which is the dev Twilio number. It's what I use locally for development. Um, and let's call it. Hello, welcome to Vaughn. I am your helpful phone assistant. How can I help you today? Hello, do you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. How can I assist you today? Uh, do you know the programming language Clojure? Yes, I am familiar with the programming language Clojure. How can I assist you with it? Tell me some details about it. Clojure is a functional programming language that runs on the Java Virtual Machine, JVM. It is designed to be simple, expressive, and easy to learn. It supports both functional and object-oriented programming paradigms. Would you like more information or assistance with closure? Um, no, tell me about core async. If you have any more questions in the future, feel free to contact us. Goodbye. Core is a closure library that provides facilities for asynchronous programming and communication. Okay. Goodbye. If you have any more questions in the future, feel free to contact us. You can end the call. All right. So, as you can see, there are sometimes mistakes uh, that it does. And for this one, I disabled the interruption uh, because that has some issues and I prefer to uh move safely so yeah uh the the function calling demonstration is me telling it to end the call and what it does at that point uh let me see here i don't know if you can see it but you can have a transcript of the entire conversation that we just had um so it's the role you, this is basically if anybody worked with the open ai api before it's the same thing as how you would have that and some events um let me see if there's anything else that's interesting uh no yeah that's it moving back here uh thank you that was my presentation the website for the project is volm.com um and my personal website is Ovistoika. Feel free to, to reach out on my personal website. You're going to find all my social uh, accounts. So yeah, that's uh, that's it.